In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at SciMat. SciMat stands for Science Mapping Analysis Tool, and it was created by the researchers Kobo and the rest of his team. Um, it's an open source free software tool. And what's really unique about SciMat is along with the cluster networks, you can also create strategic diagrams that are quadrants that look like this of Kalon's centrality and Kalon's density which we'll get into in a second. And it can be used to figure out the major themes of the field, as well as the evolution of those themes in the field. And along with the themes or keywords, you can also learn more about different author co-citation networks and journal net co-citation networks, as well as bibliographic coupling and journal bibliographic coupling as well. And a really great feature about SciMat is that you can also do a lot of pre-processing within so the software. So you can group duplicates together, or if there are any plurals of that word, you can also group them together as well. And it also has different normalization measures, as well as different clustering algorithms as well. And to give you a better idea of what strategic diagrams are, they're used to create themes, group themes or keywords into quadrants that are based on Kalon's centrality as well as Kalon's density. And Kalon's centrality refers to how central that theme might be. So the, so the amount of external links that one node has or one theme has with other links. And density would refer to the amount of internal links that that one node would have with other clusters within its thematic network. So in this case, on the right upper quadrant side that has a high centrality and a high density, these themes would be called motor themes since they're both well-developed and they're also important in structuring the research field. They also are used to show that the concepts are have a strong external links and they're conceptually closely related to them. On the left upper quadrant side, you see themes that are highly developed or highly specialized, but they might be isolated or peripheral to that theme. So they might not have much importance to the field, but they're very sp specialized and, and there's a lot of depth in that field. And in the lower left quadrant, which has low centrality and low density, the themes are both weakly developed and of marginal importance. And they might be representing either emerging or disappearing themes. And on the right lower hand side, you see themes that are high in centrality, but low in density. They might not be as developed, but they're important for the research field. So they're transversal and they're general basic themes. And another diagram that SiteSpace can show you is the thematic evolution of that research field. So you can see the evolution of a theme of, or a thematic network of keywords from one time period to the next. So in this case, theme A has a smaller node that then becomes a larger node in theme in, in period two. So the, the size of the node can be a measure of the number of publications with that keyword. So if it increases in size, it would, size, it would have a larger node. You can also use other indexes or measures like the G index, for instance. So it, if it has a higher G index, it would have a, a, a greater sized node or a larger node. And the links between the themes are based on similarity measures. So we'll see shortly that we'll be using the inclusion index as a similarity measure between the two thematic networks, the two nodes. And in this case, you can see theme B evolving into both theme C and theme B. So in this case, it, it might show to have more publications in the same theme, but it also has strong connections to theme C, although it is not titled the same or doesn't have the same name. And so now these are just examples of a strategic diagram as well as a thematic network 
from a research re review article by Raquel et al. 2023 about neuroleadership literature, um, which refers to incorporating neuroscience concepts into leadership. And so in this diagram, you can see here terms like neuroeconomics and mirror neurons are considered motor themes, as well as in this case, neuroscience and dis decision making might be basic themes that haven't been as developed, but are central to that field. Um, you can see fields of the themes like evolutionary psychology and mental health. They might not be as developed and they're not quite central to the field as well. In this case, you have philosophy of science and neuroanesthesiology and COVID-19, which have a low centrality, but they are highly developed and specialized and looked into, even though they might not be central and have external links to the rest of the field. And in this case, um, this is a thematic network of the node of neuroscience. So in this case, it would take, if you were to click on this node, you could see the thematic network. So it has links between my learning and mindfulness and rationality. Um, and you can also see links between the, the nodes that it's connected to as well. And this is just a picture of the SIMAT website. Um, and I'd also recommend looking into this article here as it gives you a lot of insight into SIMAT as well as reasoning behind different similarity indexes and clustering al algorithms that you can use, which we'll look into right now as we open SIMAT. So you can just click on the SIMAT icon after you finish downloading it. And you can click on the download linked in order to download it as well. Once you've downloaded and opened SIMAT, you can then create a new project by going to File, New Project, and on in the Path section, you could click on Browse to select the folder that you'd like to add your SIMAT files into. Then also add in a file name. and then click on accept. And now I can import my data set so I can go to file, add files, and I can add it in a web of science, plain text format, or I could add it in RIS and CSV formats. You could use the RIS format that we uh, got from the Zotero reference manager software. In this case, I'll be clicking on ISIWOS. And then I can select the files I'd like to use. It might take a while for it to load, but once it loads, you should be able to see, click on the menus and see the options that show up. So now that you've imported the data set, you can first pre-process the data by going to group set and then word, and then find similar words by distances. And now this option will help you group certain words together, especially if they mean the same thing, or if they're a plural version of the word, you can then group them together so that your map isn't redundant and it doesn't show the same word twice. So in this case, we could select find similar words by distances. So that way we can decide the number of letters that the two words would differ by. Simat will now ask us the maximum Levenstein distance. And having a distance of one will mean that the words differ by one letter. And then in this case, you have Bailey scales and Bailey scale. So plurals of the same word. And so you can select the version that you'd like to keep. In this case, I'd like to keep Bailey scales and then um, click on move. And in this case, this will be the group mint name. And then the two 
words, Bailey scale and Bailey scales will be merged together. And in this case, humans and human are the same word, but one is pluralized. And so you could select the version that you'd like to have as a group name, and then both the group and both the themes would be merged together. And so you can carry out the same process throughout until you are finished with creating all of the groups. Okay, so now that you've finished grouping the words that are synonymous or similar with each other, you can hit OK and then go back to group set and go to word group manual set. So that way you can check the words and see if there are any other words that could be put into another group. So you can go and look at this list of words, the words without a group. So in this case, we see that Bailey Scales of Infant and Toddler Development 3rd Edition isn't in a group. So in, we could actually combine this into the Bailey Scales group. And I could actually come uh, select all of these and add them to the Bailey Scales group. So you can go down the list and make sure that everything that can be put into a group is put into a group based on words that they're similar with, or maybe alternate spellings of the same word, um, or just related terms that you want to group together. And if you'd like to create a new group, like in this case, abilities and ability can be combined into the same group as they mean the same thing. You can select both of them by clicking on the shift key and then clicking on to new group. And then you can just select the group name. And you'll see it here. So once you've created your group of words and looked through the list of words without the group and sorted them accordingly, you can now go to knowledge base and then periods and periods manager. And so what we're going to do now is create time periods or time ranges so that we can compare those different ranges and see the evolution of that keyword in time. So you can just start off by adding the time ranges that you'd like to add. So if I was going in, say, five-year increments,
Okay, so now I have four periods here. And if I click on the first one, I can then go to add and then add the papers um, so that SciMat knows which references to take the keywords from. So I can just select all of the years from 2000 to 2005. And then click on the right arrow key. Make sure. Okay. And then I can click on add. And you can see the number of documents for each um, year and month on the right hand side as well. And then you can just go down the list and do the same thing. So once you're done with selecting your time ranges, you can now go to analysis and select make analysis. And then you can select all the periods that you'd like to analyze. You can click next. And since we're, we'd like to make a co-occurrence network, you can select words and author's words, sources words, and added words. Now the next section is for selecting the data reduction methods. So a frequency reduction just refers to the frequency with which the keyword occurs in the literature. So you could select this option so that, and you could change the minimum frequency to two so that you know that the occurrences happen at least two times. And the type of matrix would be co-occurrence. And the next section is about network reduction methods. So the edge value reduction has to do with reducing the number of links. And now for the normalization me measure, based on the paper that we saw from Kobo et al., it's recommended to use the equivalence in the equivalence index. And for a clustering algorithm, you can say simple centers algorithm for the maximum network size. You could have say 50, and then you can have a core mapper as the document mapper. And in this case, the core documents would refer to documents that have a keyword frequency of at least two. For secondary mappers, you might have one occurrence of that keyword. And for quality measures, you can select the G index as well as any other measure. I'm going to also look at some citations. And now for the longitudinal map, which looks at the evolution of that keyword, you can select the Jacquard's index for the evolution map, and also based on the literature about SciMat from the paper that we saw earlier, it's recommended to use the inclusion index for the overlapping map. And you can click on finish. And now before we load the analysis, you can first save it. So you can do, you can name your your diagram, so infant development, um, strategic, and diagrams. Save. So 
In the period view, you can see a strategic diagram. And if you were to click on core documents, you can see the document count. So intervention would be two documents and three children would be 20. So as you can see, children actually has a high, the theme of children. If you were to click on this, you can see the, the cluster network of children and all of the related co-occurring keywords and how it has a high centrality but a low density. So it's a basic or transversal theme that hasn't been very well developed. And so if you were to look at the next time period, you can see children now has an increased density. So now it has higher internal links. And if I were to click on this, I can see how the do number of documents of the other clusters that it's internally linked to have increased in size and have also increased in number as well. And so I can also see rhesus macaque also perhaps referring to an other animal studies um, emerging as well. And if I were to go to the next period of time, I can see other uh, the thematic networks and themes forming as well. And if I just want to look at another cluster network like children, I can see that here. If I wanted to look at co-exposure, for instance, I could see that here. And if I wanted to look at the G index of the values, I'd see I'd be able to click on this and see the G index, as well as the sum of the citations for each theme. And then for 2018 to 2023. I can now see children still remains to be central, high in centrality and density, which makes sense because we did search for infant development. Children is bound to be a recurring theme that's central to this literature. And there's also preeclampsia, hormone, and sex difference um, that have a low centrality but high density. So they're being, they're very well specialized, but they don't seem to have a lot of external to the other themes in the literature. But transition and breastfeeding and the mother infant double interaction seem to have a low density, but a high centrality. So they might be basic themes that haven't really been looked into further and haven't really been specialized further. And Finally, if you'd like to save it, you could then export it to an HTML or a LaTeX file as well. So you could just export it. If you just name it if in dev and then save. And then you have it as an HTML file. And if you were to open the HTML file, then you would get links, you would get HTML files, but you would also get images of each of the clusters and the, and the strategic diagrams and the evolutionary diagrams as well. And if you'd like to look at the evolution, you can also see that here. So you can see the four different time periods and how they've evolved over time. So there you have it. The, this was just a quick way on creating maps and networks and strategic diagrams on SciMat. I hope this helps you create these sorts of maps. And that brings us to almost the end of these tutorials. I'll also be having an extra video if you're interested in learning other ways of looking at these sorts of networks when it comes to analyzing literature or performing searches. So yeah, I hope this helps.